So what you're going to do to start is you're going to just lay this, one of these rectangles, templates I cut, and you're just going to lay it on the corners and draw around it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Would like it to be fairly neat. Um, leave a little bit of a gap and do another. So you have four on. I have my paint laid out. I'm working with analogous colors, so yellow, green, darker green into blue. I have water cup. I have a selection of brushes and I have a paper towel. All very important when working with watercolor. You have to control the amount of water and pigment going down. So I'm going to start with this flat brush on this one because all I'm doing is a wash and I'm going to blend between my colors. So I activate my paint, which this is already wet out of the tube, so not much to do there. And I'm going to start with some water. I'll dab some of the water off, but since we're working with a wash, we really can keep it um, pretty wet. So here's my yellow and I'll blend it further than I want it to go because we'll work together. And this is kind of dry, so I'm gonna keep a little bit more water in my brush and go into my yellow green. Again, my brush is drying out since this is wet on wet. I'm going to keep it pretty wet. And start working into my darker green. Now this, there's a big difference here, so I'll actually go in and mix some up and just go in between here. And then I'll blend them in. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go with my green and I'm going to pull a little bit of blue in it. And then I just have my blue down here. Now to get even smoother transitions, you can start with um, your section wet already and let them kind of blend together. What you notice with watercolors is sometimes when you go over it, it'll start lifting up. So I'm going to, you need to work quick or have your water all wet there first. So I'm going to go back, clean my brush up really good, and go back into my yellow. Since yellow is such a light color, sometimes when you are working with those lighter colors, yellows and oranges, you'll want to even change your water between them. But there we are. Wet on wet. Let the water move the paint in between. Mix them a little bit in between to get your smooth transitions. I think I started off a little bit dry on this one. So watercolor, the key in what you're learning to do is learning about the amount of water for certain effects that you need and the amount of pigment. So watercolor, all about the water. Okay, 
So the next square is Scrofito and Salt Resist. Scrofito is um, scratching into the surface. So I'm going to use a push pin and I'm just going to scratch into the surface. Now what I want you to be aware of, yeah, you could use this to actually do some kind of a drawing in here, but I also want you to be aware of how you have to take care of your um, paper. When you overwork it or when you scratch it or you erase too much, things like that, um, you can ruin the way the paint flows down on your surface. And you'll see, it'll tend to pull up and soak in to those areas. So that's Graffito. I'm gonna go ahead and just use this green. And I'm gonna go right over it. And you'll see how it's getting dark. So it can be a really cool effect here where you reveal some art. Uh, it can also be a real issue when you mar your surface and you have the paint uh, getting heavier in that area. Okay. Um, so that's graffito. The next thing is salt resist. Salt resist, you have to put the salt in while the, pa the paint is wet. You can't have it get too dry. Um, so, and if you were to really use it in a piece of art, you would want to sit and play around with it a little bit to see how, what the best time to put that salt in. So I'm going to, and I have salt in the classroom, and I'm going to lay down some paint. This is a new paint that I'm using, this Koi, and it's got a lot of pigment to it. I like it, but it's a little bit different than the other, so I'm having a hard time figuring out exactly how much to water to use myself. So now I'm going to get the salt. I'm going to put a little bit in my hand. Instead of just pouring it on there, I want to control it. And I'm going to just sprinkle it. And then you have to let it dry before you can brush the salt away and see what the effects are. But you'll see already the salt's pulling the pigment uh, and absorbing it. 